Hi, I'm Pat Norsha with Ram Clutches, and we're here today to take a little closer look at billet racing clutches and exactly how they operate and function. In 2010, we released the How It's Made television show on the Discovery Channel and subsequent YouTube video, which now has over a half a million hits and has been very popular. We've had a big push down with a lot of people for more information about the clutches. That earlier video just covered the actual construction of the clutch. Today, we're going to delve a little deeper into the unit. We're going to look at some of the adjustments, the operation, and the functions of the unit. Okay, when you receive your new RAM billet clutch and you're getting ready to take it out of the box, the first thing you're going to see on the instruction sheet is that it points to three quarter 20 retaining screws located around the cover. These are for installation at purposes only, so when you go to install the clutch, leave the screw in there when you first unbolt the cover from the flywheel. We're going to remove the cover from the flywheel and then take the clutch disc and floater out, and the flywheel will be ready to install. Now on the flywheel we've got a friction surface just like we have on the pressure plate that's ground steel that can be resurfaced after being, after being used. And then we've got six stand bolts with stand adjusters located on top of each one. These are little barrels that are threaded and this is used to control the ring height, which we're going to talk about a little closer once we get the clutch assembled. But that's what we use to adjust the position of the clutch after for wear. When you're putting the flywheel onto the engine, you want to be sure and use a high quality flywheel bolt like this ARP L19 flywheel bolt. This in conjunction with some blue Loctite will allow you to torque the flywheel up to 135 foot-pounds of torque. Also, anytime you have the clutch apart for resurfacing and you don't remove the flywheel from the engine, be sure to retorque the flywheel. Now we're going to take a look at the pressure plate assembly of the clutch. There's two main pieces of aluminum that comprise this. The first top piece is called the cover plate. And then the bottom piece here is called the pressure ring. The pressure ring has a steel friction surface that's bolted to it that runs against the clutch disc. This surface can be reground or refinished during a rebuilding process. When you set the clutch down inside of here, there is six individual springs located underneath these red caps, and there is six individual levers. Now, the RAM 10-inch clutch assembly has three different springs that can be located inside these caps. The yellow spring here generates 420 pounds of base pressure. The black spring would generate 690 pounds of base pressure. And the red spring generates 900 pounds of base pressure. On top of your clutch spring that's inside the pressure plate, you'll see a little adjuster. When you look down through the hole, you'll see a little Allen screw. This little screw is threaded into this adjuster. And as you unwind this screw, it actually compresses the spring. The adjuster sits on top of that spring, and as you wind it out, it shortens the installed height of that spring, which increases the static pressure. After the spring, the next component we're going to look at is the clutch lever, which are six levers in this unit. The lever out of the clutch looks like this right here, and you can see it's got a pivot pin with a bushing in it that goes into the pressure, or pressure plate cover, and then it's got a slotted pin that goes back into the yoke or the clevis and the pressure ring. The top hole here is what we call the counterweight hole, and that's where counterweight adjustments are made to control the clamping pressure. And we'll push down on that a little harder here in a minute when we get to talking about specific adjustments. Once the flywheel is torqued to the engine, we're now ready to put the clutch pack on there, which will be the clutch discs and floaters. You'll be using a lineup shaft, which will be splined like your transmission. The clutch disc has a wide side of the hub flange, which is going to go to the transmission side. You can see the back side is where the rivet heads are located. Once the clutch disc and float are in place, we're now ready to set the cover assembly back onto the unit. And we'll tighten down the six cover nuts. Once the cover nuts are tight, we're going to torque them to 75 foot-pounds with a torque wrench.
Now, once we've got the cover nuts torqued, we're ready to remove these three quarter 20 retaining screws that we were talking about earlier. Now that we've got the unit completely bolted together, we're ready to check the ring height or the installed height of the clutch. And each clutch comes with a setup gauge like this right here. You've probably heard the terminology before, zero the clutch out or set the clutch to zero. What they're referring to is the installed height of this pressure plate in relationship to the cover. Zero on this gauge can also be measured with a dial caliper going down through this height gauge hole here. Measuring down through this hole, one inch 15 thousandths equates to zero on this gauge. So to check that position, the first thing we're going to do is slide the gauge in the hole here. And we see that we're about eight or nine thousandths off from zero. So to correct that, we're going to loosen, loosen the cover knot and we're going to adjust the titanium stand. Now this stand barrel is threaded. As you lower the barrel down, you're basically compensating for clutch wear. So as the clutches get worn over run after run, you're going to lower that. When you install a new clutch or clutch disc into the clutch pack, you're going to need to raise that stand for the thicker disc. So we've loosened the cover nut and we're gonna put a punch in here in our stand hole and we're gonna rotate it just about the dimension of one hole there. Then we're gonna tighten our cover back down and retorque it. Then we'll come back and check it with the gauge again. And now we can see we're on zero. We're gonna do that on all six locations. When it's the first time you've done this, you'll probably need to do it two or three times going around the unit. The more you get do it, the more used to it you'll become and it'll almost be second nature. Now that we've got the clutch set up at the proper ring height and installed in the car, we're ready to make our base pressure adjustments and our counterweight adjustments. Starting with the base pressure, we're gonna take a look at the adjuster again that we saw a few minutes ago. This sits on top of the spring, and you can see the Allen key. It's 7.30 seconds through the top of this cup here. Now keep in mind, as we unscrew this and turn the screw counterclockwise, we are compressing the spring or shortening the installed height, which is increasing the pressure. Each of these springs has a corresponding pressure that goes with it based on its color as to how much one turn of base pressure increases it. The yellow spring increases the base pressure for one turn at 15 pounds. The black spring increases at 20 pounds per turn and the red spring is 30 pounds per turn on each individual spring. When you insert the Allen wrench into the cover, the first thing you're gonna do is turn it a little bit clockwise. You're gonna feel the spring or the adjuster be in a neutral or a free position turn very easily. You're gonna slowly turn it counterclockwise back to the left and you'll feel it stop against the spring cup and that's where it's starting to compress the spring. From that point on, we're gonna put the necessary turns. In this spring, we'll put two turns of base pressure in here. Now, once you finish the first spring, you'll continue your way around the unit and do the other five springs. Okay, next we're gonna install the counterweight on the clutch, which goes into this quarter inch hole that's located on the top of each lever. Each clutch assembly is gonna come with an assortment of nuts and bolts, which is a counterweight set. And when you see in your instruction sheet, there'll be a corresponding gram weight that tells you how much each nut and bolt weighs. By changing the amount of weight on the levers, we're changing the clamp force of the clutch as the engine accelerates through the RPM band. By increasing the clamp force over the RPM band, it lets us leave with a lower initial pressure when we let the clutch out initially and slide the clutch into engagement and then have additional clamp force to carry the load of each sub subsequent gear change as you go down the racetrack. By putting a combination of bolts and washers on the lever, we can increase or decrease the clamping force of the clutch. Once the counterweight's on, snug each one in position, and then work your way around and do all six levers. Okay, now that we've got the clutch assembly installed on the engine, we've got the installed height set correctly with the ring height, We've got the base pressure adjustments made. 
We've made some counterweight adjustments. We're now ready to put the bell housing and transmission into the car. So we're going to put the bell housing on the car, bolt the transmission up, hook the drive shaft up, and now we're ready to set the release of the clutch. Now we talked about the clutch levers a few minutes ago about centrifugal pressure and applying clamp force, but the lever also functions as it's what disengages the clutch or breaks the coupling between the engine and the drivetrain when you depress the levers of the clutch. So to set your air gap, you'll have the driver or someone push the clutch pedal in, and we're going to put our gauge in through the inspection window, and it'll come up on zero. Then we'll have the driver push the clutch pedal in, and we'll see that what the air gap setting is on the gauge. So it'll go from zero to your prescribed number, whether it's 35 or 50 thousandths. Now, once we've set the air gap to the correct dimension, we're going to check the throw-up bearing clearance. This is the face of the throw-up bearing that pushes down on the clutch levers. We want to maintain a 300 thousandths gap between the levers and the, and the throw-up bearing when the clutch is all the way out. So if the bearing is too close to the fingers, there won't be enough room for the lever to rise up when the clutch wears, which will cause the clutch to be disengaged or simulate riding around with your foot on the clutch and not allowing it to clamp. So if there's not enough clearance, you'll just run your pedal stop back to increase that clearance there. Okay, now that we've covered all the basics of the installation of the clutch, setting the air gap, release bearing clearance, we've pretty much covered all, everything you need to know to get started with your clutch. Now after you've made some runs and you go to service the clutch or do any maintenance work, you're going to repeat the same process in reverse. You're going to put the retaining screws back in the cover, undo the six bolts, remove the cover, and then you can access the clutch discs and the friction surfaces for resurfacing.